Hello everyone. In this video presentation, we will be illustrating how to make a simple GUI using both the PowerPMAC PDK and PowerPMAC Motion Controller. In the ensuing sections, we will use Visual Studio 2017 as a platform for creating a simple GUI, although newer versions should also work. Visual Studio can be downloaded from the Microsoft website. This video will involve general PDK installation knowledge, creating a Windows form application, creating a visual layout for the GUI, adding reference libraries, establishing communication with PMAC, tying together the inputs and outputs of our GUI with PMAC structures, and creating an executable for the finished product. The Power PMAC PDK is a development tool for creating simple or advanced GUI applications that can perform a variety of system functions by taking any form of display desired by the developer. Upon successful installation of the PDK, the folder structure will consist of a sample folder for sample projects, several DLL files to import as reference libraries when programming your GUI, a licensing tool to authorize application development on a developer's machine, the PDK manual for viewing things like software structures and installation instructions, and a README file that explains how to authorize the application created by the PDK on a machine. For detailed instructions on how to license your PDK, please view the section How to Authorize PDK Licensing from the PDK Manual. The step-by-step -step instruction will get you to the point of generating your CLL licensing file. The licensing file along with the two dkey library files must then be placed in both the System32 and SysWow64 folders located in your C drive. As a general reminder, both the developer and end user need to place the dkey library files in their C drive for the application executable to work properly. The dkey library files can be found in the PDK folder. Creating a new project in Visual Studio can be done by clicking File, New Project. When the New Project prompt pops up, select Windows Form App, give the project a name, and hit OK to begin customizing your GUI. At this point, we can begin customizing the GUI frame on Form 1. Opening the toolbox allows us to drag the controls onto the Form 1 display. This example project will simply consist of only a few toolbox components such as buttons, text boxes, a rich text box, and a few labels for describing component functions on the GUI. The properties of each component allow the functionality and appearance to be customizable based on preference. Now that the layout of my GUI is complete, let's get the visual components communicating with PMAC and performing their described functions. To see the finished GUI or look at the code in more detail, please open the companion project included with this video. The code can be viewed by right-clicking on the form1.cs file and selecting View Code. To use any feature of the PowerPMAC component library, you must add a reference to the DLL file. To do this, go to the Solution Explorer on the right, right-click References, and then Add Reference. Now browse to the location where you installed the PowerPMAC component library, select the DLL files, and click Add. These using parameters at the top of my source code reference some of the DLL files we added and are essential for using functions necessary for the GUI. Now that the GUI's design is complete and the code framework is in place, we can add the standard code snippets for opening communication with Power PMAC that is used for sending and reading strings to and from PMAC. In this project, I will be establishing synchronous communication with PMAC. Start by adding these two lines under the namespace declaration. Next, add these variables just under the class definition of the form. The code below starts the dialog box that establishes communication. This must go in the form's constructor. For disconnections, connections, and errors, add the following code to the form's class.
And finally, the code below is added to append text to the rich text box on the GUI for displaying communication status. Now we add the global licensing variable. Just append this as a separate class in your namespace as such. To wrap everything up, we need to add a settings file to retain the communication settings for talking to PMAC. To add a settings file, in the Solution Explorer, right-click on the project name, click Add, and then Component. Scroll down and select Settings File. The name by default is Settings 1. Now click Add and bring it into the project. Right-click on the Settings file in the Solution Explorer and click Open. For my project, I will fill out the screen that opens such that it looks like the screen below. You can enter the IP address of your PMAC on the first line. Now the GUI should be able to communicate with PMAC and the other components on the display will have the ability to send or receive data. If you double click on any item on Form 1, it will take you to the embedded code where you can customize what action is taken for the specific component being used. For instance, by double-clicking on the Send button, the source code will open up for it. In the code, I have a parameter called communication.getResponse. This is a very useful command for sending or receiving information to and from PMAC and is often used for a variety of my component actions in this project. The first argument in the parentheses is the parameter you wish to read or write to in PMAC. The second argument is the stored location you wish to put the string response given back from PMAC. Here is another example of how communication.getResponse is used by double-clicking on the speed select button. We see that getResponse is writing a value to a PMAC variable name called speed cell. Note that the quotation marks send the contents of the first argument to PMAC as a string and receive a response back as a string placed in the second argument called response which is a string variable name I defined in the Visual Studio project. In the code, I've added some strings and integer variables in order to do status checking or setting up logical conditions that will be used for components on my GUI, such as the LED display and position window. The code below creates two threads when the form starts up, one for the LEDs and one for the position window. These threads allow for the GUI to run two separate routines asynchronously so that there is no interference with any of the other components when executing their routines. This code sequence is used to continuously call a position window routine after it retrieves the motor's position and places it in a created variable name that will be used for parsing. This is the final block of code that parses the motor output string and sends the command for displaying the final result as a string in Motor1's position window text box. Similarly, the code below is used to continuously call an LED status routine after it retrieves the status of the LEDs from their respective PMAC variable names and places it in another created variable name called LED value that will be used for parsing. The information from earlier is then parsed using the code below and logic conditions are created for determining if the integer value of the LED indicates whether it is on or off so that the GUI can reflect the status on the LED display using red or gray coloring. Before you can create an executable, you'll need to download a Visual Studio installer by clicking on Tools, Extension and Updates, then search the Visual Studio Marketplace list for the installer and hit download. After downloading, you'll need to close Visual Studio for the installer to finish downloading. Click Modify on the window prompt that pops up. When the download is complete, open the project back up, right-click on the project solution, then click Add New Project. Navigate to Other Project Types, select Visual Studio Installer, and then set up project. Provide a name and then hit OK. Click on the application folder and on the blank window to the right, right click and select Add Project Output. Choose Primary Output and click OK. Then right click on the output and select Create Shortcut. Now you can customize the name of the generated shortcut. Select the shortcut and drag it to the user's desktop folder. If you want to add a logo to the executable, right-click on the project and choose Properties. 
In the Application tab, browse for a picture to use that is a .ico file type. Make sure the project is placed in release mode. Whenever a setup project is added, you should rebuild the project. Now when you build the setup project in the Solution Explorer, the setup installer is generated. The file path can be viewed by right-clicking on the setup project name and clicking on Open Folder in File Explorer. Run the installer file, select your preferences, and hit Next. When the installation is complete, you should finally be able to view the shortcut of the executable on your desktop and officially have your first custom GUI that's ready to run. By clicking on these three buttons, we can issue jaw commands to the motor. As the motor moves, we can see the position updating. We can issue commands and query variables in the terminal by clicking send. As we change speed select, we can see the different LEDs lighting up, indicating a change in motor speed. And we can see that the speed did change by querying it again in the terminal. When we push the e-stop into the press state, we can see the motor stop and cannot be jogged until we release the e-stop. Additionally, the e-stop disables the LEDs when pressed. We hope that this video has given you a good introduction to creating your first GUI using the PowerPMAC PDK. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact your local Omron representative.